One of the deepest mysteries in all the lands between comes from a simple throwaway line of dialogue. So easy to miss that many players will not have even heard it on their initial playthroughs, yet quite difficult to forget once heard. Your seamster, Bok, I see him crying from time to time. I think he misses his mother. He wants someone to tell him he's beautiful. Does being born of a mother mean one behaves in such a manner? Melna's dialogue here is one of the most surprising and intriguing in all of Elden Ring, as it seems to imply that some people are born not from mothers, but by some other process entirely. What then does this mean? How are people actually born in the Lands Between? Perhaps she was just referring to herself, that she personally is not born of a mother. But in the process of understanding what Melna meant here, we have uncovered deep mysteries of the Erd Tree and the Golden Order, because as it turns out, the life-giving power of the Erd Tree is much more literal than you thought. Despite its visual and mythological preeminence in the story of Elden Ring, Relatively little is known about the Erd Tree's actual functions. Visually, it is by far the dominant feature of almost any vista. Religiously, it is an object of persistent and devout worship. And metaphorically, of course, it is easy to see its inspirations from the various Tree of Life mythologies throughout the world, from the Norse Yggdrasil to the Mesopotamian Salupu. But functionally, Within the lands between, what is its actual purpose? What does it do? You may think this a silly question, after all, what does a god do? What is the purpose of any supernatural being or entity? Well, as a matter of fact, rather than simply being an object of faith, the gods of ancient religions were expected to perform some function in reward for their followers performing the correct rituals or sacrifices. People would make sacrifices in the name of protection, or a bountiful harvest, or for victory in battle. So the question is, what do people expect to happen when they pray to the Erd Tree? What do people expect when they wish for an Erd Tree burial? In order to fully answer these questions, and establish the role of the Erd Tree in the ecosystem of the lands between, we need to search deep into the historical and archaeological record of this world to a time before the first burning of the Erd Tree, when the blessings of the Erd Tree still flowed abundantly, the Age of Plenty. Just before the player character officially makes their grand entrance to Landell, we find a curious collection of tapestries that, on first glance, appear to be of the generic tree worship variety we've seen throughout the game thus far. True, their faded state betrays their deep age, but otherwise they appear relatively unremarkable. Upon closer inspection, however, there is something odd about them, and uncovering it reveals a striking story. This tapestry depicts a sacred tree, undoubtedly the Erd Tree, but instead of a typical canopy, the fruits of this tree are, in fact, people. At the top of the tree appears to be a depiction of Queen Merica's bedchamber, or perhaps the Erd Tree Sanctuary. This pattern is repeated throughout the room on wooden wardrobes and doors, as well as throughout the inner chambers of the capital. Not coincidentally, the same genealogy tree is depicted elsewhere in Elden Ring, specifically on the Elden Throne and Godfrey's equivalent throne in Stormvale Castle. Clearly, this is a sigil of the utmost importance to the citizens of the capital city, and it appears to be a literal genealogy tree, what we will call the Genealogical Erd Tree. 
Such depictions of genealogy trees are not uncommon throughout history. Today, genealogies are practically a matter of curiosity, allowing one to mine their own family history and maybe even find long-lost family members. But in the ancient world, and in fact throughout most of history, genealogies were a matter of grave importance as they would dictate inheritance, right to rule, and establish the prominence of one's lineage. Isaiah 11.1 quote, A shoot will come up from the stump of Yeshai. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. End quote. As it turns out, the game's developers chose to model the genealogical Erd tree after one of the most famous genealogy trees of real-world history, the so-called Tree of Yeshai. If we compare the two, the inspiration is clear. The real tree of Yeshai depicts the lineage of Jesus, beginning with Yeshai, the father of King David. Typically, the depiction is that of a tree with Yeshai sleeping or laying at the base. Often, there are notable ancestors like David and Solomon depicted on the branches as well. And the most notable descendant, Jesus, or often Mary holding Jesus, at the apex of the canopy. In the earliest days of Christianity, it was somewhat controversial, to say the least, to suggest that the Messiah, the descendant of King David that was prophesied to save the Jewish people, was an unimportant apocalyptic preacher, a man that had been crucified by the Roman state. The entire point, therefore, of the depiction in the Tree of Yeshai is to legitimize Jesus by showing his lineage of descent from the fabled King David. And, interestingly, in the genealogical Erd tree, the position normally occupied by Jesus at the midline apex appears to be occupied by Queen Merica's bedchamber, certainly a fitting position for the dualistically human and divine ruler of this age. Of course, this is not the only time that Merica is depicted with explicitly Christian iconography. If it is indeed Merica's bedchamber, then it's quite interesting to note that it is the bedchamber per se, and not Merica herself, that is depicted, seemingly elevating her role as queen mother over her as an individual. The genealogical Erd tree thus draws our attention to the queen's bedchamber. There, leaving aside the piles of tablets for another episode, we can see that the building itself is clearly modeled after the Roman pantheon, including the coffered dome and the oculus at its apex, which allows the entry of a single beam of sunlight, suggestively focused on the queen's bed. And interestingly enough, the conjugal bed is actually modeled after the basins used for collecting crystal tears from the minor herd trees almost as if Merica herself is part of that bounty. Both Merica's bed and the aforementioned collection basins have the same shape, are made from the same material, share the same interwoven pattern on the upper rim, and her bed is also where we find the blessing of the Erd tree incantation. The statement of this scene is clear. The queen herself is chief among the blessings of the Erd tree, just as her position in the genealogical Erd tree would suggest. And finally, as we know Queen Merica to, in reality, be an outsider, a Newman, she is unlikely to have actually been among the Erd tree's blessings, which gives us a new perspective on this effort at legitimization. Just as the early Christians, in response to doubts that Jesus could indeed be the prophesied Messiah, sought to legitimize him by placing him in the Davidic line on the tree of Yeshai, so Queen Merica seeks legitimacy through the genealogical Erd tree. The Landell sigils are not the only such examples, however, of apparent genealogy trees in game. 
In Elphiel, Brace of the Halic Tree, we see relief depictions of a similar trope, again with a sacred tree bearing people as its fruit. Although this time, instead of the most prominent fruit being that of the queen, there appear to be two twins, undoubtedly Nicola and Melania. Elsewhere in the Halig Tree, we see a fully formed womb and pelvic bone made from the roots of the tree. Not exactly a subtle clue that trees and birth are somehow linked. And finally, we see a variation of this imagery in the sealed doors of the catacombs found throughout the lands between, where the sacred rite of Erdtree burial is carried out. These relief depictions show bodies being resorbed into the roots of the tree, as well as new bodies being formed as fruit, clearly an arboreal metaphor of the ends of a circle of life, and one that borrows from the imagery of the tree of Yeshai. But it is not just a metaphor. If we examine this relief and its environs carefully, we can see dead bodies actually being physically absorbed into the earth tree's roots in the catacombs, exactly as depicted on the catacomb door reliefs. So if the relief literally depicts bodies being resorbed into the roots of the earth tree, can it be that the upper half of this depiction, the bodies growing out of the earth tree's canopy, is an actual depiction of how birth happens in the lands between? Indeed, it appears that the developers, inspired by the tree of Yeshai, apply the notion of a genealogy tree literally, such that in the Age of Plenty, it functioned both to absorb the dead called to its roots, and bear people as its fruit, or perhaps more accurately, its sap. This new understanding helps to explain how, on the one hand, Melina announces in no uncertain terms that denying new births is a moral ill. Life endures. Births continue. There is beauty in that. Is there not? And yet, on the other hand, she doesn't know about those born from mothers. Does being born of a mother mean one behaves in such a manner. This apparent discrepancy is resolved by the understanding that most people in the lands between are born not from a mother, but from the Erd tree itself. Likewise, this helps explain why Melina so unambiguously links the destruction of the Erd tree via the Flame of Frenzy to the end of new births. Please, seek not the frenzied flame. As one who strives to become a lord, deny not the lives, the new births of this world. By contrast, though we burn the Erd Tree with her at the Forge of the Giants, in all four of the endings in which we mend the Elden Ring, the Erd Tree has been reformed, both confirming the cyclical nature of periodic burning and reconstruction, and allowing new births to continue. For those curious about the prior burning of the Erd Tree, we'd recommend watching our video on the topic. The Erd Tree is not, however, the only life-giving tree in game. In fact, there are several examples throughout the game of variations on this theme. When Melania Blade of Mikola achieves her apotheosis and becomes Melania, goddess of rot. It is because she allows, in her desperation against the tarnished of no renown, the scarlet rot within her to blossom for the third time. We can see evidence of at least two of these blooms, one just outside of her boss room, and another in the boss room itself after we defeat her. Yet, mysteriously, in the most infamous example of Scarlet Rot Bloom, in the Swamp of Aeonia deep within Caled, there is no such bloom. Yet we know from Jaren's narration and the associated cutscene exactly what happened. Melania desperate and wounded in her fight against Radan, broke the needle that was staving off her rot affliction and allowed the rot to blossom, 
at once neutralizing Radan and cursing the whole of Caled to be a hellish wasteland. So then, where is the Scarlet Bloom? Well, the evidence clearly points to the initial bloom having evolved into the massive vine structure we see in the middle of the Swamp of Aeonia, which is even called the Heart of Aeonia on the map. This is where we find the broken needle that Melania discarded, and, not at all coincidentally, this is where Millicent invades us, and where her twin sister Pollyanna can be summoned. I need your help to heal a certain young girl. Her name is Millicent. Well, I'm the one that found her. A mere babe in the swamp of Aeonia. She is one of my dear daughters. So, evidently, Gowry came here after the Battle of Aeonia and plucked Millicent and her sisters from the Scarlet Bloom and cultivated them as if they were his own daughters. As her prosthesis item description reads, quote, The despair of sweet betrayal transformed Millicent from a mere bud into a magnificent flower. The girl, Millicent, she is a bud, green and undeveloped, waiting to flower into magnificence. Before her, I'd never seen a bud of such superior quality. My daughter, who would prune your sapling flesh? Oh, Millicent, my most promising little bud. Millicent and her sisters are quite explicitly buds from the Aeonian bloom which manifested when Melania fought Radan. Gowry, nominally Millicent's father, found her and her sisters in the swamp and cultivated them like precious flowers. Of course, her mother, Melania, did not literally stop by on the way back from fighting Radan to birth quintuplets. Rather, they all are buds from the scarlet flower of Aeonia. This process does not preclude, however, the transmission of traits from one generation to the next. Though Millicent is cultivated as a bud from the flower of Aeonia, she shares the characteristic red hair, scarlet rod affliction, missing arm, and even the impressive sword skills of her mother. The Scarlet Bloom, fed with Melania's own blood, bears her indelible mark, and the sacramental bud description makes the connection between blood and buds clear, as it reads, quote, Believed to originate long ago from a strain of buds cultivated with youthful, sacramental blood. It appears that the blood-soaked battlefield of Aeonia proved quite fertile ground for producing the next generation, an interesting foil for the process of consumption and rebirth seen in the Catacomb Door reliefs. Another variation of this Tree of Life theme is the rebirthing ritual that Renala performs, both for her sweetings and for the player character. This process requires the Rune of the Unborn, encased in the hardened tree sap of the Erd Tree. And finally, the ancient dynasty, the first to establish the worship of the Great Tree, seems to have also developed the first ritual of birthing from sacred trees. The faint traces of this ritual come down to us from the obscured reliefs of the ancient dynasty's stelas. Modeled after the black obelisk of Shalmaneser III of the Assyrian Empire, the ancient dynasty's version does not maintain the same scenes as the original, but rather has changed these to specific in-game depictions. The reliefs are too faded to be certain, but we believe these to be vestigial depictions of the first life-giving tree ritual, which no doubt had a central role in the establishment by the dynast of the revealed religion of the Great Tree. So, we have established that the power of the Erd Tree comes from its life-giving properties, which is much more literal than we initially thought. Furthermore, we've explored the developer's inspiration from the Tree of Yashai, the insight it grants us into the birthing power of the Erd Tree and the role of Queen Merica in this process, 
And finally, we've outlined some of the many other examples of life-giving trees in the lands between. In our next episode, we will delve further into the orthodoxy of Erd Tree birth, and the fate of those left outside this process, the graceless practitioners of heretical birthing.